Oh, why can't you kiss a man without going and marrying him? First, you sometimes love to wildly, and when you feel that way so nice all over, you can't help yourself. I wish some man or other would take me some time when he's there and kiss me in his arms. There's nothing like a kiss long and hot down to your soul. It almost paralyzes you. And then I hate that confession. When I used to go to Father Corrigan, he touched me, Father. What harm if he did? And he said, where? And I said, on the canal bank, like a fool. <laughs> but whereabouts on your person, my child? On the leg. Behind? High up, was it? Yes, rather high up. Oh, Lord, why couldn't he just sit and bottom and be done with it, whatever way he put it? I, I always think of the real father. And what did he want to know for when I'd already confessed it to God? He had a nice fat hand, a palm moist always. I wouldn't mind feeling it, neither would he, I suppose, from the bull neck and his bull collar. I wonder, did he know me in the box? I could see his face, you couldn't see mine. Of course, he's never let on. Still, his eyes were red when his father died. They're lost for a woman, of course. It will be terrible when a man dies. Let alone them, I'd like to be embraced by one in his vestments and the smell of incense off him, like, like, like the Pope. And besides, there's no danger with a priest. If you're married, he's too careful about himself. And then give something to H.H. H. the Pope for a penance. I wonder, was he satisfied with me? The one thing I didn't like was him slapping me behind, going away so familiarly in the hall. Though I laughed, I'm not a horse or an ass, am I? I suppose he was thinking of his father. I wonder, is he awake? Is he thinking of me? Was he dreaming? Am I in it? Oh, I wonder, who gave him that flower he said he bought? He smelt as some kind of drink, not whiskey or stout, but perhaps the, the, the sweetie kind of paste they stick their bills up with, with some liquor. I'd like to sip those rich door, just green and yellow expensive drinks, those stage door Johnny's with the opera hats. I tasted one once, we dipped it out of that American that had the squirrel, the squirrel talking stamps with the father, all he could do to keep himself from falling asleep. After the last time we took the port, and the potted meat, it had a fine, salty taste, yes. And, and I was felt lovely and tired myself, and, and I felt asleep as sound as a top the moment I popped straight into bed. Till that thunder woke me up. Oh, it's as if the world was coming to an end. God be merciful to us. I thought the heavens were coming down about us to punish when I blessed myself. I said a Hail Mary like those awful thunderbolts in Gibraltar. And then they come and they tell you there's no God. Wait, there's George's church bell. Straight. Three quarters the hour. Wait. Two o'clock. Well... That's a nice hour for him to be coming home to. To anybody climbing down into the place to see, did anyone saw him? I'll, I'll knock him off that little habit tomorrow. First, I'll look in his shirt to see if he has that French letter still in his pocketbook. I suppose he thinks we don't know deceitful men. All their 20 pockets aren't enough for their lies. Then why should we tell them, even if it's the truth, they don't believe you? Then tucked up in bed like those babies in the aristocrat's masterpiece. He brought me another time. As if we hadn't enough of that in real life without some old aristocrat or whatever his name is. Disgusting you more with those rotten pictures. Children with two heads and no legs. That's the kind of villainy they're always dreaming about with not another thing in their empty heads. They ought to get slow poison the half of them. Then tea and toast, buttered on both sides, and you laid eggs, I suppose. I'm nothing anymore. When I wouldn't let him lick me in Hollis Street one night, man, man, tyrant as ever. For the one thing, he slept on the floor half the night, naked, the way the Jews used when somebody dies belonged to them. 
and he wouldn't eat any breakfast or speak a word, wanting to be petted, so I thought I stood out enough for one time and let him. He does it all wrong, too. He's, he's thinking of his own pleasure only. His, his tongue is his too flat, or I, I, I don't know. He, he forgets the weapon. I'll, I'll make him do it again if he doesn't mind himself. I'll lock him up to sleep in the coal cellar with the black beetles. I wonder, was it her? Josie off her head, or that barmaid he does. Of course, his wife always says, he, he, she's sick, or she's just getting better of it, or, or he's just getting better. Oh, he is a good-looking man, too, though he's getting a bit gray over the ears. They're a nice lot, all of them. Well, they're not going to get my husband again into their clutches if I can help it, making fun of him then behind his back. I know well when he goes on with his idiotics because he has sense enough not to squander every penny piece he earns down their gullet and he looks after his wife and family good for nothings. Poor Paddy Dignam, all the same. I'm sorry, in a way, for him. What are his wife and five children going to do unless he was insured? Comical little teetotum. He's always stuck up in some pub corner and her and her son waiting. Bill Bailey, won't you please come home? Her widow's weeds won't improve her appearance. They're awfully becoming, though, if you're good looking. What men wasn't he... Yes, he was at the Glen Cree dinner and base dollar bass barrel tone. Oh, that night he borrowed the swallowtail to sing out in Hollis Street. And Simon Dedalus, he was too, he was there. He was turning up half screwed, singing the second verse first. He was always for the flirtifying too when I sang with him. Oh, he had a lovely voice. It went all over you like a warm shower bath. He's a widower now. I wonder what his son, he says he's an author and he's going to be a university professor of Italian and I am to take lessons. What is he driving at now? Showing him my photo. It's not good of me. I ought to have gotten it taken in bravery. It, that never goes out of fashion still. I look young in it. I wonder, <laughs> he didn't make him a present of it altogether. Or, or me too, also after all that. Why not? I... I saw him driving down to the Kingsbridge station with his father and mother. I was in mourning. Well, that's 11 years ago now. Yes. He'd be 11 now. What was the good of going into mourning for, for what was either one thing or the other? Of course, he insisted I he'd go into mourning for the cat. I suppose he's a man now. By this time? Why, he was an innocent little boy then, and a darling little fella in his Lord Fauntleroy suit and curly hair like a, a prince on the stage when I saw him at Matt Dillon's, and he liked me too. I remember what they all do. Wait. By God. Wow, yes. Wait, yes. Hold on. He was on the cards this morning when I laid out the deck. Union with a young stranger, neither dark nor fair, you met before. I thought it meant him, but he's no chicken, nor no stranger either. Besides, my face was turned the other way. What was the seventh card after that? Ten of spades for a journey by land, and then there was... A letter on its way, and scandals too. The queens, the three queens, and the eight of diamonds for a rise in society. Yes, wait, it all came out. And two red eights for new garments. Look at that. And didn't I dream something too? Yes, there was something about poetry in it. I hope he hasn't got long, greasy hair hanging out into his eyes or standing up like a red Indian. What did they go about like that for? Only getting themselves and their poetry laughed at. I always liked poetry. When I was a girl first, I thought he was a poet like Byron and not an ounce of it in his composition. I thought he was quite different. I wonder...